And speaking of cash grab, let's just go ahead and segue in today's movie. And I'm assuming we saw the same one as Disney's 1979, The Black Hood. Is that what we watched? Is that correct? Yes, that is okay. that is definitely what we watched. Okay, because if you got the answer wrong, you would be failed. But you get a chance to for the finals to take this test over again a couple of weeks later. So don't worry That's about it. Friend. Yeah, and you can also That's send in an appeal well. to go ahead and get that. Hello? Okay. All right. So... The film is, of course, 1979, The Black Hole, and I segued into a cash grab because this is what this is. Uh, I'm not for sure, and you nerds on the internet, please correct me, George Lucas did pitch Star Wars to Disney, and it makes sense because Disney was the home of fantasy movies. I'm fair to say mm -hmm. that, right? And really, Star Wars is not really traditional sci-fi so let me explain what traditional sci-fi fiction is and uh, of course lucas was asking me or they were texting me what is traditional sci-fi i really want to know coconut daddy and i said i will explain it to you on this show traditional science fiction is the genre that is a branch of horror so you have horror which is you get the first uh, really big horror book science slash science fiction is Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Okay, so what that created was a subgenre called science fiction. So science fiction's roots are in horror, meaning that every time you go out in space, something bad happens in the end. So, like, if you go out in space and uh, just to go looking for, yes, you'll meet beautiful women on Venus, but they're deadly women. And then at the end of the movie, you find out that these women were not just women, but evil monsters who want to eat you. And so that's the traditional science fiction genre. So every film had that up till like when Star Wars came out, which combined fantasy where we get from Tolkien books like Lord of the Rings and things like that and you combine Lord of the Rings and you combine science fiction space and you get Star Wars which is like a space opera where you got a hero and a villain and all those things like you would you know like uh, the Hobbit would go out there and kill the evil dragon so would Luke Skywalker kill the evil dark Sith Lord right that was the idea of Star Wars, and it made it different. It made it a thing that put on the map, but at the same time made lots of money, which means Hollywood goes, ka-ching, we got to start doing cash grabs. So there were good cash grabs, Alien. There were bad cash grabs, Beyond, you know, that movie with John, uh, Roger Corbin, and possibly Disney saying, oops, we missed out on a gold mine. And this is what they presented to us was the black hole. And the black hole is started out, folks. Do you guys know what disaster films are? Mm -hmm. uh, I know what a disaster film is, but <laughs> I think you're me on. Well, you know, a disaster films was another genre like uh, they had uh, the... Uh, avalanche and earthquake oh <laughs> volcano even the godzilla movies nowadays in the 2012 that you guys watch those were disaster films they were very popular in the mid 70s then star wars came out and kind of destroyed that to me another one was like the airport films then airplane comes out and destroys that genre well the whole idea was first for the black hole when the script came out was to have like a space disaster film which is kind of a good idea if you think about it. A black hole would make a tempting disaster. And forgive me, Tyson Degrassi, for not being on Twitter to try to correct every non-scientific thing in this film. But the point is, it, may, it sounds like a good idea, right? Like, you would have a ship, and you've got to go against a black hole, and that would be a space disaster film. Well, they needed something else to kind of bring that Star Wars in it. First of all, you have to represent the LGBTQ community, and that's the reason why you got to put robots in it. Because robots were your first LGBTQ representatives in all your films. I mean, you take Star Wars. You... Yes, what? they were. Yes, they were. C-3PO. Are you, are you calling out C-3PO? <sighs> he should have been out of that closet a long time ago. <laughs> I, I mean, it's something that he's been struggling with a long time, but the truth is, I mean, it's like R2 needs to let go 
a little bit, you know, but that's anyways. But the point is the LGBTQ community was always represented by robots. And you had that in this film. So they had the representation of the LGBTQ community with Oh Bob and then of course Vincent, who's rightly played by confused closeted uh Rodney McDowell. The point is they were well representative in this film. So you had everything that Star Wars had and plus the uh, traditional science fiction so it didn't look like it ripped off, you know, Star Wars. And which is a good way cuz they can say with traditional science fiction, see, it's like old science fiction horror, so we weren't ripping Star Wars. Star Wars is science fiction fantasy. You fooled me again, but I'm still going to sue Battlestar Galactica for the rights of taking Star Wars because I own space science fiction fantasy. Okay, George, whatever. You're a little man and you have to justify being short. All right, so there you go, folks. That's my cute and wonderful introduction. I'm going to let the youngins who have younglings who have never seen this film before reaction and like again uh forgive me neil degrasse tyson because you weren't around when i was younger to correct me but these young people do have you available on twitter to find out whether the scientific nature of this film and why it failed and the disturbing green screen effects as well so um you guys have at it i'm gonna enjoy my coffee and thank you so much for this preview and review. Awesome. <laughs> well, I'm really glad that you went into that because I feel like it's opened a lot more doors in my mind. Because when I was watching it as a kid who was raised on Star Wars, I saw a lot of the similarities, a lot of the Star sound Wars. effects, a lot of the shooty thingies, a lot of the, uh, what would you call it, uh, stormtrooper training yeah. techniques, apparently. Uh you know, <laughs> and uh, about... I'm right in front of you. Right. So definitely lots of Star Wars vibes. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting that you said that they ripped it because, you know, it was pitched to Disney first and they passed. I, I had no idea about that. So, Well, like, that's you know, um, not scientific. I mean, I'm not saying that's accurate, but that's the... I, I, think, I mean, it makes sense, though, Yeah. not it? Right, I think he, he did, it's just I have to go back to my records and, you know, I don't feel like doing it right uh -huh. now. But I'm pretty sure if you Google, did uh, George Lucas pitch Disney Star Wars, I, you know, I'm pretty sure you get 50-50 yes and 50% no. So, mm -hmm. and, I wouldn't be surprised, I mean, regardless, now it is owned by Disney. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there you go. But, uh, yeah, green screen effects, Disney you had a Star few Wars. comments on those throughout the movie and um, you know yeah. different yeah, and, and i noticed a couple things and how it was done which i mean it's not bad i it's just you were able to yeah notice, was a, yeah pick it apart kind of but well I mean, the biggest mistake that disturbed me was like when they're when they're on the um when they're like kate is on that little uh i don't know what you want to say thing that go turntable and there's these like mm -hmm. supposedly lasers and his hand is like all over those lasers. And I'm thinking, well, if you can put your hand on those lasers, why are, <laughs> what's the danger there? You know? <laughs> and it was like, that was probably the worst effect in the whole film. But, but sometimes, you know, granted the green screen, I, I did not find them too annoying, but and sometimes they were, like uh what do we say um artistic i guess in a way like it had a little art of its own mm -hmm. i don't know what you say but i should let you guys continue because i really want this to be about you guys more uh, about your reaction because like i said i just feel it's important because it kind of shows you that disney yeah might have messed up and 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 this was kind of what happens when you are forced into that trying to make a buck and trying to be significant again because mm. Disney was very during this time. Yeah. Well, um, it was a lot of 
You know, like I said, I grew up on Star Wars. I watched a bit of Star Trek, so it was a lot of those same vibes for me. Uh, it was interesting, though, because I feel like this one was geared more towards being sort of, I guess you would say a horror film, because there's more like, um, doom. Yeah. Doom inflicting conflict, I guess you would say that. There's more of a sense of, oh, we're all we're going to die. Yeah. Uh, whereas Star Wars, you know, there's so much else going on. But in this mm -hmm. film, everything seems to be isolated to this, you know, big ship, than this one mission that they're doing, other than, you know, like this side versus this side. So mm -hmm. it was definitely interesting. Um, and it's more, it's a little more realistic than like yeah. a Star Wars film that already has aliens and different things incorporated into it because it's like, uh, they explained that they are on a ship with a mission to like uh, find inhabitable planets to live on or yeah. something like that or sustainable life or something yeah. like that, which is like, okay, this is believable. I understand, you know, rather than just being like, yo, episode one. We're fighting with lightsabers with these aliens, and there's these things yeah. and stuff on these other planets that would have civilization and like whole and like colonization, like complex, yeah, complex economy. So, yeah, it definitely it. I want to say it was a little more like words. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it's a little more realistic in that mm. sense, at least. I mean, who knows? Maybe there are, like, Ewoks out there, and I'm just, you know, blowing smoke, but... I mean, you know, if there are, I'd love to meet them. Yeah. I... I'd cuddle an Ewok. I'd definitely cuddle an Ewok. Yeah, it'd be awesome. a... oh, oh, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. We've we got, we got a Twitter free from Neil deGrasse Tyson, who just says, scientifically, that Ewoks are not cuddly that they would probably eat you. Well, then there goes my wanting to cuddle an Ewok. Yeah. Well, that's just how I go out then, because um, they're so cute. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Neil deGrasse Tyson <laughs> says... To. Wait a minute. Neil deGrasse Tyson says, Ewok will not eat you if you have a robot that they can worship. Hmm. So I got to find someone in the LGBT community. There you go. Apparently. I guess robot. Dude, the, 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 a robot in the LGBT community. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, wow. so I'll tell you what, to try to keep this organized, let's start with uh, character development and actors. Um, and uh, one thing I want to say about Maximilian Schell, uh, I don't know if you guys have read a lot of science fiction books, like if you take back in the day uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and movies like that, Maximilian Shell has that Dr. Uh, Nemo type feel like he's going to adventure and it also he the if you want guys want to see a Hamlet version you can of Maximilian Shell look it up on the internet uh, he plays Hamlet so um, I mean let's be honest these are some pretty good actors and uh, a guy was talking about the other day one of the reason why they went with older actors because they were trying to get an older audience but then you got the robots, and it's like... <laughs> but even the robots are played by older actors, too. And uh, But these were big actors for the disaster film genre. So, uh, let's see. Timothy Bottoms, or Joseph Bottoms. I think it's Timothy Bottoms, or Joseph Bottoms. I can't remember. One of the Bottoms brothers. Um, they He, he was kind of introduced in this film because, like, uh, after that he had a nice television career and then faded out of nowhere. But uh, I think uh, his name was Charlie, and I had an action figure of Charlie when I was younger. I wish I had that action figure. Probably worth a lot of money because black hole figurines and uh, are really expensive if you look on eBay. They're good collector's items. So uh, let's talk about character development. Um, go there. Let's start there first. Okay, um, I guess I would like to touch on, um, what was, what was her name? I, I forgot her name. Kate. The, Kate. The only girl in the movie. Kate. Kate. Kate? Kate? Okay, so Kate's st backstory is that she's out on this mission, and why are you looking at me like that? I saw you in the camera. And I was watching weird. you talk. Anyway. Stop uh, being we start creepy. <laughs> 
And, uh, well, Kate's on her own, you know, ship with Dang. this crew. And their mission is, like I said earlier, they're looking for, Dang, uh, true. inhabitable places, uh, established with, um, life Dang, on other true. planets. And it's also revealed Dang, that true. her father was also on one of these ships doing his own mission with it's kind of the same yeah the same thing they yeah. were also looking for inhabitable mm -hmm. life so we right off the bat we get a little bit of a backstory for her which mm -hmm. shows you know a little bit of motivation she wants to find her father she wants to do what he's doing and mm -hmm. kind of things like that so, she's proud to be doing mm -hmm. the same job as her father and throughout the movie she is sort of looking for her father because they get the story they end up on this different big ship that had apparently been lost or something mm -hmm. like that and it's found and then mm -hmm. it's realized and that her father was on that ship. right that's the ship that her father was supposed to be on and i really wish that they would have touched more on that i feel like yeah. they left that a little bit of a loose mm -hmm. end and everything but um basically she's searching for her father Spoiler alert, he's not really like I don't I don't want to say he's not on the ship, but he's presumed to be dead basically. Yeah. And uh yeah. So you get to see her go from like, you know, searching for that to uh just really trying to save her friends and mm -hmm. you know, struggling to come to a good outcome in the end, really. Yeah. I feel like I explained that pretty bad. Was that bad? No, uh, no. I, I think it's fair what you're talking about. Because like you said, there is... A, Kate does have a strong tie. I didn't notice it when I, when I was a kid. I, I mean, like, when I was, like, five or six, I guess, when I first watched this. Or it might have been seven. I don't know. I was a little tyke, right? And I was too young for Star Wars. It's pretty dark for how young you were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing. I didn't understand what was going on. I just saw lasers, flashing lights, and that kind of thing. And I loved the red robot. I thought he was the coolest thing in the world. And, Maximilian. you know, yeah, Maximilian. And, like, I didn't understand this whole thing, Kate and the father and all that kind of thing. I was, like, a little kid. But I did like the robots. And, like I said, you know. My theory was that... Like, you know how all of the robots were, like, were people, essentially, under their mask? Yeah. My theory was always that somehow her father was Maximilian. Yeah, you know, I was thinking that throughout the thing, but at the end of the movie, you see the guy inside of Maximilian. So I feel like Maximilian's the only actual robot. Yeah. Because if there's someone already inside of Maximilian, how'd they put him in Maximilian? I don't know. Or maybe that was the guy that was already in Maximilian. Oh, and oh. I'm just tripping. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got a tweet from Neil deGrasse Tyson. He said, let's see what he says about this. He says, uh, oh, I see. Uh, robots don't really exist. Okay, so like maximilian oh wait a minute he had to divide it into two tweets like maximilian so robots don't really exist like maximilian okay so thank you neil degrasse for straightening that out okay so um so we got that much character development what about you alex is there any uh characters that stood out for you that you liked because it's like obviously there was some sort of connection between lucas and kate there there was, and this isn't like a positive character uh, progression, but like, what was his name? The old guy that... There's a lot of old guys uh, in this. <laughs> the one, the the one, one guy on the that's ship. significantly older than the rest of the old yes. guys. Yes, that guy. Is it, was, um, it, was it the uh, guy who plays the, the superhero on the uh, Spongebob Squarepants show? I don't know. He's talking about the guy that was snooping in the garden. Yeah, that guy. That guy is... That is the... What was the superhero on uh, 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 Squ SpongeBob SquarePants? Oh, um... Captain... Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Really? Yeah, he's the, uh, he's the voice for him. 
That's okay. so crazy. Yeah, and he also. Uh, I was like, I'm not going yeah. In. yeah, he was also Mikel in Mikel's Navy. So yeah, okay. What about him? Because like I said, uh, you know, being the uh, SpongeBob SquarePants uh, alumni. So at the beginning, he seemed like a trustable character, and like he was a part of the crew. So you're like, oh, okay. So he's one of the guys that we want to like try to support throughout the movie. And then, spoiler alert, like, he takes the ship and is like, yo, I'll see all y'all never. And he tries to take the ship and get out of there. Yeah, he pulls a cart, he man. Everybody else. He pulls and a cart, man. I thought that was like... Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> and they died. Yeah. Oh, he pulls a cart, man. <laughs> That's what I said. Yeah, yeah, no, he totally does. Yeah, he's like, uh, excuse you guys, I'm getting him. So it's like uh, he does. He tries to go home, and then he dies. Um, I'd probably say my favorite character now that I see it for the third time as an adult and totally understand what's going on uh, was uh, Maximilian Schell's character, uh, the Dr. Nemo type character. I find him fascinating because mm-hmm. you just don't see that brilliance of evilness. Like, I think Captain Nemo is what was the influence behind all like the James Bond villains. Because that's the thing I always loved about British uh, villains versus British superheroes. It's like, you know, John Wayne was always, you know, that goes up against the rancher. I used to have some cattle from Bob. He's a boar. Now give me his cattle back. And the guy would go, no, I'm going to shoot you, John Wayne. John Wayne said, not until I shoot you first. I take the cattle back to Bob. You know, John Wayne was the hero. But in Britain, it would be like something like this. It would be like, oh, man, I have seen you stow the cattle from me. How did you know that I stow the cattle? Well, I saw your burning iron that is Bob's burning iron that says Bob. Oh, a brilliant deduction. You knew it was Bob's cattle because it had Bob's burning iron on it. Yes, touche. Let's play. Talk about this over chess. Oh, shall we? And that's how, you know, you get like... That's what I loved about Maximilian Shell is that kind of character that you have to outwit to be. And it's like you don't see that in a lot of American films. American films is like shoot first ask questions later it's it's hard to get the plot out though when you kill a man because you can't have much of a plot because he's dead so there's not much acting you can do but max man shell is brilliant i think he's brilliant in this part i really like him in this uh so that's my favorite character as far as that so a uh, plot let's move on to the plot let's uh, get this thing going let we got uh these characters make sure all right but hold well, on ta- let's take a break hold on a minute let me check on the recording here for a minute what happened okay so we we start off and they're in their little ship and they are on their mission to find sustainable life mm-hmm. and then gosh i can't really remember i think well, Alex there was helped. like a problem with the yeah. ship, but I think they ended up fixing it, and it really wasn't important to the story. Is yeah. that correct? Something like yeah. that. Well, they stumble upon this other ship, this bigger ship that ends up kind of sucking them in, right? Oh, it's the black hole that starts sucking them in. Oh, gotcha. But they they get it on their radars or whatever, and they're trying to match it up against like. All the different kinds of ships that are in like their history log or whatever mm-hmm. and uh they hit upon the this old ship and kate is like hold on a minute that is my dad's ship that he was on and they're like trying to discuss well should is it worth going towards this black hole and investigating the ship, the ship? Or because they noticed that it wasn't moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whenever it should have been getting also getting sucked into the black mm-hmm. hole. That's right. That's right. Okay. So basically, we decide that we are going to board this ship. Mm-hmm. And so they decide to try to fly up to the ship. And they're noticing all this gravitational pull. And they're like, 
yo, why is there all this gravitational pull if this other ship is stationary? So they they decide to make a pass, and once they get in the ship's vicinity, all the gravitational pressure and pull is gone. It's zero gravity. And they're like, well, then I guess it has to be the ship. So they decided to board, and that's when they get on, and they're like, yo. They walk out of their ship onto the little entrance way, and they notice they're being like, guided towards the somewhere, and they don't know where. Yeah, uh, so they get on, they have this cool, like, what would you even call it? This path they take to get to the center of the ship where the guy is like they have to go through a few different rooms and then get on a few different like it almost seemed like amusement park rides mm -hmm. like you get on it reminded me of like those rides where you get in and you have your guns and you like shoot at things yeah. as it brings you through but only it was going faster mm -hmm. it was pretty cool effects i mean mm -hmm. i feel like i haven't really seen that in like i said i was trying to compare it to the star wars and star trek earlier feel like there isn't really too many elements like that in that so yeah. you know I feel like that was kind of original anyway it guides them straight to uh, the big control room I would say there are doctor guy I I missed his name what was his name oh you talking about the main doctor yeah mm -hmm. I just call him Maximilian Shell because that's his actor name Maximilian Shell yeah I just, that's who's the actor okay. is who plays him, so. All right. And I well, that guy who, his, I liked his character. He was pretty, like, yeah. wonky. I like, yeah. I like how he played his character. Yeah, uh, yeah that's the one I call, uh, I compare to, like, Dr. Nemo and, and to, yeah, like right. said, that's what I'm saying. That's my favorite character, too, in the entire film. And, and like I said, anyways, he's mad. <laughs> Yeah, right. obviously. He's, uh, it, Kate even said at one point in the movie that he is walking a dangerous tightrope of uh, genius and insanity. Yeah, it was it was interesting. But uh, as soon as we get into the room, everyone's like, Whoa, guy, who are you? And Kate's like, Where's my father? <laughs> <laughs> Immediately is like, Where's my dad? And he's like, I'm sorry, dear child. Your dad he is, is dead. dead. But you got some pretty eyes. <laughs> She's like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I. Uh, <laughs> that's the way I took it, at least. Yeah. I don't know if anyone else got that vibe or. Yeah, yeah cool. no, that, that's what I felt. All right, cool. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Oh. Uh, <laughs> So we establish that the doctor guy like tries and establishes that he's like not really a threat to these guys, mm. but still like respect and obey me while you're on my ship. Yeah. Thing. He's like, I'll treat you as guests, but you have to like submit to me. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, there's that. Uh, and every once in a while, some of the characters would sneak off and like, discover discover something and be like. Hey, yo, guys, I found this thing. And yeah, it's like, he's, like, giving them a tour through the ship, and it's like, okay, at this point, there's, like, maybe three people following him, and one of them's like, oh, I'm gonna sneak off. I'm like, dude, there's two other people. How are you, one how of are you not gonna... One which is a robot. Yeah, how are you gonna be like, oh, I didn't realize that this guy, this whole ass person is gone. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, there was a lot of sneaking off and, like, little little like adventures that they go on right, and then they're like, somehow oh, never get noticed they're like oh this guy wants us to you know not be out of line better sneak around yeah. and like and then they had killed two of the um like sentry robots yeah the robots the they, robot that they brought did because they met up with an yeah. older version of himself that was like supposed to be on the mission with this old ship whenever yeah. there was the old crew no. But, um, they were totally blanking on the thought, the tangent I was just Oh, with. the robots? What were you talking about? 
Yeah. If I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, um, did you Freudian slip and say brobots? But <laughs> robot, robot. Pretty much, though. I mean, yeah, that's how I got the vibe. Yeah. All right. So, uh, basically, now one thing I can fear, I can justify the sneaking off. All right. Because it's like there's one of him. There's only one human, really, technically. And like, what, seven, five or six or seven of them? So, it would, right. it would be kind of easy to do because the robots are not like used to other human forms it's not like it's like an everyday thing for him now it, yeah it's like you're gonna get caught really yeah but. it's oh and the thing is too i think too like you said he even though he's a genius and he's lost humanity he still kind of wants that human pride like when uh oh uh, the guy who norman from psycho is like totally in love with him and he's got like this gay crush on him and everything he's like still getting off on that like you know he likes the fact yeah. that this guy worships his brilliance you know and it's like you can see in his eyes like oh uh, somebody finds my brain attractive and he really likes that and i think some of that you know, when you get that superiority complex, and we've discussed this, you become a little complacent. Um, as far as emotions and stuff, I, that stuff I understand scientifically. You know, I, I kind of, I kind of surprised that Alex bought into some of the science jargon and all of this because, like, I try to figure this stuff out because it's like we know so much more about space than we ever have before, and it's like, how does this hold up? scientifically that's the only thing that's going through my mind while i'm watching this you know story wise i if you took them out of space would it survive if it was like if they were on a um you know a regular scientific complex down on earth would the story be all right i, I mean that's okay the story's fine with me you know it's just the science that's what kind of bothers me about this is like how does it hold up because it's like we know so much more about it and then of course we got Neil deGrasse Tyson on Twitter explaining all this to us and it's so hard to conceive that part that to me was like that was going through my mind through this entire film but um because let's move on to we're trying to get this thing going here I actually I related to Alex yeah. in a few ways because like honestly if you're gonna roll up and see this ship not being sucked in by the black hole and he's already mastered that technology and then see how impressive it is that this guy's got his own basically android robot army like I would think that he might be pretty serious about whatever he's doing as yeah. well like I'd want to see if this guy could do it I wouldn't be like, at one point Alex was like, I want to go with you. I would definitely not yeah. be like, yo, let me come into this black hole with you. No <laughs> way. No. But like, I'd be like, do it. I, I want to see you do it. Like, yeah. I want to see him do it, you know? So, I'm sorry. I just had to get that out there. Okay, I, 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 I guess so. I just don't know. I mean, it's like, I still have this thing. I love life a little bit more. <laughs> I mean, I understand the adventure part. I understand the adventure part, but it's like, it seems like to woo you, I'm going to have to build a ship that does not go inside a black hole for you to get to get into those pants. I've got to build a ship that just won't go into the black hole. Other than that, I you I'm you're not impressed. I can buy you all the gifts in the world. I could be the smoothest lover. But if I build a ship that's on the edge of a black hole and say, I'm going to go come inside that black hole, you are going to go with me. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, I'm just saying, I want to see you do it. If you're going to be like, yo, I'm going to go, I'm going to go do this, this crazy thing, I'm going to do it. I'd be like, do it. I don't know. I want to see it. I want to see it. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying, but it's like with me, you know, I think the problem is like, uh, yeah, like I said, Alex is an explorer and he's he's fascinated in that thing. And he's one of those type guys would take an injection of a virus, injected him inside of himself to see if he can. Captain America. You know, yeah, exactly. Just to see if he can defeat it. I myself, let me test it on a gerbil first. 
and then see if I can cure it in the gerbil before I <laughs> injected myself. That's my issue, and that's what my biggest problem is. Alex is Alex is too swayed by this guy, and I agree. Maybe it's the boredom on the ship, and he feels like he's far superior to these mm. other guys. And of course, his mother was talking to him. He said, "Alex." Go with the creepy old guy. <laughs> he was like, and don't go with that whore. That whore Kate. <laughs> She'll just lead you down the wrong road, Alex. Mother, you shouldn't be talking to her. Every time I hear, I hear him talk. Every time uh, Norman Bates talks in this film, that's all I hear is his mom talking to him. <laughs> you know, the entire film it's like. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm trying to move the plot forward to get through this because um uh because like so okay we've explored the ship we've got we've established max Mellon shell's character we've established we, now norman we, bates character we broke the form of robots and now we've established that he is going to go into the black hole and alex is like i want to go with you mm -hmm. and the rest of the crew is like maybe you shouldn't do that and he's like well i'm gonna go do that <laughs> basically and they leave them they they all separate for a moment yeah well what yeah. bothered me yeah was they broke the robots but and then they were like we don't know when so we, we need to do this fast and because robots will be discovered the robots weren't discovered until like almost the end of the movie yeah yeah, yeah. but that was then you know there's no other humans to stumble around and find these robots yeah i mean but there's the soldier robots that do their shifts and yeah they, i guess they do to report back at some point mm -hmm. I, so. I always liked the look of the sentinels i thought they were kind of cool looking i love their laser guns too mm -hmm. they had that double look laser gun yeah very sci-fi esque it, it once again it made me feel like I like they were on one of those rides where they were like <laughs> ah shoot the things. In fact, let me uh, one thing I want to get the old Bob and uh, Vincent thing out of the way because when I was a kid, right. now you understand I believe that was set up for children. I believe that scene was really set up for kids because it's like. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, everything else, I mean, it's like they said, oh, we want to make an adult film and everything like that. And some guy's like, yeah, but we got to have some for kids. We're Disney. <laughs> it's like, okay. So they type, oh, Bob and Vincent and the Sentinel thing. Because it's like they're in an arcade and everything. And it's really, like, everything else is so serious. But when they get to the Vincent and the old Bob thing and the Sentinels and everything, it's hard for me even to look at these robots and take them seriously. They have these big old uh, South Park eyes. And then they're like, uh, you know, like, sometimes I do see Cartman and old Bob. Old Bob looks like Cartman almost to me. And and it's like Vincent does too. And it's like, you just want to see the Cartman's voice coming out of them. But it's like, they got these big old cartoon eyes, which are so, I don't know, like, for little kids. And they have this little scene, you know, which is kind of silly where old Bob's like, you got to represent the old, you got to represent the old thing and show, oh, represent the old. And it's like they're shooting in this little arcade thing, like 80s arcade thing like you had in, when you were a kid and everything. And that scene goes mm -hmm. through. And then, like I said, that's when they established destroying the robots. So apparently the plot is cool, uh, is important. I mean, not cool, but important to the scene because, like you said, the robots are destroyed. They have to hide the robots and like, which becomes a very important scene. And then, oh, Bob, the dumbest character in the entire film is the one who explains to them what Maximilian is doing. The the worst character on in the entire film has to explain to them what Maximilian is doing. And so that kind of speeds everything up. So they say they even though the robots are corny and everything, they become so significant to this plot because. Oh, Bob tells him what's going on. So, what does he reveal to the crew? What does Oh, Bob reveal to the crew? Basically, doesn't he reveal that like all of the robots are actually people being kept alive in this weird like dun 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 dun? Weird thing. Yeah, yeah. The the, so, the big reveal. Right? Yeah. And then that, like yeah, he reveals two things that Maximilian wants to go in the black hole, duh, 
And then number two, that the entire crew is not dead. They're former robots of themselves, not really human, and that there's a little bit... Unfavorable. Yeah, humans are up above and everything like that. Because there's a scene where there's like a robot funeral, and it's supposed to be really creepy, Phil, and everything, and that kind of thing. And yeah. and then, of course, like the garden reveal, uh, where we had the guy limps. The funeral makes sense to me. Hmm? The, the funeral still made no sense to me. It's in there. The <laughs> <laughs> one thing that I didn't get is as soon as Kate was like, oh, the crew is still on the ship. Like, not one bone in her body was like, I should find my father. Yeah. I feel like there should have been at least some po some part of her that'd be like, Oh, is my father still on the ship? I want to blah, 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 blah. What became of my father? Instead, she was just like, we got to get the F out of here. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, yeah. I don't give a crap about my father. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Well, there, there's a scene then, in Event Horizon. I'm sorry, Alex. I'll let you speak after this. Okay, you guys seen Event Horizon? Uh-oh. Anyways, there's like, uh, it's basically the same thing. It's basically like the black hole. You know, they go through the event horizon, and then hell is supposed to be in the middle of the black hole, which is kind of like in this film, right? So there's a scene like like that too, played by uh, Lawrence Fishburne, and he basically is like, "Let's get the f out of here." <laughs> and that's what I think of that because Event Horizon is kind of like a remake of this, you know, basically. So Alex, as you were saying about, because uh, I'm trying to get to the ending here because it seems like we're hung on some places um okay so basically oh bob had let's go for it. oh bob has revealed everything to them right and that's his importance of this because they got to have someone reveal them to them and they thought why not a cute robot and so all right so the cute robot reveals the everything that's going on so they can move the plot so what happens there where, where we go from there alex not you, Lucas. Um, well, <laughs> Alex was going to speak. Yeah. <laughs> so they kind of they go off and they try to uh, find the. Or, so it's revealed to them by uh, what's his name? Oh, Bob. Who? What? The robot. Oh, Bob. Bob. Oh, Bob. Oh, Bob. Oh, Bob. Um. It's revealed to, to them by old Bob that uh, everyone is alive. And so they're like, well, we need to get out of here. And I don't think it's safe any longer. So they all try to get out of there. Their ship is fixed, I assume. They don't really, like, say... They don't really give, like, you a progress indicator like most shows and movies will do. Yeah, they were like, it's almost done. It, it'll be done. Oh yeah, no, it'll be finished soon. Yeah, well, it'll be done. Um, but I, it's so. It's very, very odd for sure. But yeah, I mean. <laughs> and they tell Charlie, I think it is, to stay on the ship. But then Charlie's like, "Yo, I gotta go help them." Uh, and so Charlie runs off, and what's the old guy's name is like? Well, oh, I just hurt myself. Because he was going to go yeah, with Charlie. Yeah, he, he fakes it out and he takes the ship yeah. and leaves them all there. But they're like, okay, well, if we go to the, like, escape pod or something like that, they could make it. The probe ship. Probe ship, there you go. And basically they have, I almost said Linda, they have Kate with them. And yeah. apparently, we didn't touch on this, but Kate has ESP with the robot Vincent. because... She does. Why not? It's yeah. a sci-fi movie. We're going with it. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. She's the, the robot's like, yo, y'all gotta get the F out of there. And then she's like, yo, we gotta get the F out of here. And like somehow kind of convinces Alex that like, yo, this isn't a good idea. Yeah. Doesn't Alex or someone ends up like taking off a mask of one of the like robots mm -hmm. and the robot's like, <laughs> oh. deadness. Yeah, like that. It was great. I was like, so that's that's the one part that I was like, man, okay, maybe I see why this is PG. That's insane. But yeah, uh, then Alex is like, oh man, we got to get out of here. But the robot that is also Maximilian. So I'm yeah. confused. 
the robot was like, I'm gonna, like, kill you. Yeah. And he does. And then, and then Kate's like, all right, bye. Yeah. And she gets back to the ship. Yeah. And right as the ship is taking off. Mm-hmm. Right as the ship is taking off. So the probe ship goes and they escape. And then... They realize that, uh... The probe ship has been set to the course that the uh, the big ship had been planned for, and so they go through the black hole. And there's this really crazy, like, you have to be on some kind of drugs in order to assemble this montage. Yes. Montage that we go through real quick. Yep. Really wild. Disney, uh, Disney yeah. dug up the yeah. old Fantasia artist and said, here... Oh my gosh. Oh no. Real quick though. Oh, yeah. Real quick though, you did leave something out. Like said, first of all, if you guys, well, a couple of things. Like the probe. The probe was set up. And like when I was a kid, I thought like you, it was an escape pod. Um, and But no, when I got older, I understand the probe was actually going to go in the black hole. And they had established that through the entire film. And so it wasn't surprising uh, that the probe was going to go into the black hole. <laughs> it, it was like, spoiler alert. But the thing is, there is a scene where they felt like there had to be like a hero scene, which was really yeah. dumb. There's two scenes. If I was an editor, I would have cut out. Number one, the stupid robot scene where they're playing the arcade game. Number two, the saving Kate scene. Saving Kate scene, terrible special effects. Great music. By the way, let's talk about this is one of the best scored films I ever heard. In fact, there's two minutes. They have an overture, and which nowadays movies don't do overtures anymore. But when you were younger, once the they used to, it was a big deal when you watched a movie. Their curtains would go open, and then they'd have this little bit of overture before the movie. And then that means everybody get in your seats or you're going to miss this film. You know, basically, stop making out for a minute and watch the in titles, which were the uh, first computer titles ever used on screen. So there's a couple significance here. So last overture, uh, first computer titled screen. So everybody gets to their seat. And anyways, great music. So so they decided to do this right in this hero scene because Kate wants to leave. But they said, you know, they do this. Oh, they take her to the robot creating a uh, turntable so we can make her into a robot right so the sentinels sentinels go take her to the turntable that turns everybody into a robot right like it's a, a processing factory in amazon so the amazon workers are there to turn them into a robot and ship them out you know to be because what happens is they end up being a lexus and so that's what happens so why they're on the turntable so amazon workers can turn them into lexuses <laughs> the captain comes in and they have this wonderful score. Dun 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 Great laser battle. Pew 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 And so as soon as her face is gonna get turned into laser to turn into Alexis, the, he sticks his hand right in the laser and nothing happens. And like then Great. picks her up and she's got a literally aluminum foil on her head. Like you would to keep aliens from getting in there, so yeah, that's something that I'm yeah. Like, uh, that's one scene I would have been ch -ch -ch, cut, cut, cut. Let's get rid of that scene. It's so corny. It's so stupid. It's so horrible. Especially in fact, but the music yeah. is great. I mean, it's like dun 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 dun. dun. So let's so let's basically you guys rent through the end they go to hell in the black hole because like theoretically people believe that hell is in the middle of the vortex of the black hole but they survive and then the credits come up and it's kind of mm -hmm. weird and kind of ominous and um there was probably if this film did make a blockbuster they were going to do further adventures with these people there was like a six story comic book uh going to further adventures so if you guys want to find the comic books online to see what happens go ahead yeah have at it mm -hmm. you know and Ernest Borg 9 ends up being the voice of the uh superhero on Captain Squarepants or SpongeBob SquarePants so uh Captain. whatever 
So, uh, <laughs> it's time for SpongeBob SquarePants and with uh, Ernest Borgnine. So, he ends up being the voice of that, what happens to him. So, there's further adventures. There was action figures. The film flopped. Nothing more was really said about it until years later, you know, when Disney bought Star Wars now, and now they're in science fiction realm. A uh, couple of scenes I want to go over, though, with special effects, why, music-wise, talk about the music. Is the music great or not? I mean, is that not great? Overture, I mean, is it scored music? I, like I mean, I'm picky because when it comes to sci-fi movie music, I fell in love with the Star Wars ones. Yeah, so. but in comparison, isn't this not as good i mean does dun 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 yeah it was so good it just, i'm spoiled by star wars yeah yeah i would compare it to like i'd like it better than star trek's the motion picture and then i like um star wars better of course it's probably the greatest because you know of john williams what he did and mm -hmm. then I would say this is right there. And then Star Trek, the motion picture, I like it too. But this one sticks in my head all the time. I, I, I mean, I used to hum this uh, tune all the time I, when I was a kid. I used to have like the little album. It would be storyline. That used to, when they made films like this, they'd come up with these little 45 discs. Because when you were a kid, you had these little 45 players. And they were big sellers. And you could get like music. You, I mean, play real records. But they had Whitman did comic books and they also did uh, these little storylines now quick nerd thing right now jack kirby for the comic book actually pinned this so the great jack kirby actually made the comic book form of this but you could get the little record by whitman now on the record player the story is more hopeful at the end there's more dialogue at the end he says We've been uh, we've been trained to find new worlds. Let's find new worlds for ourselves, and it goes to that. Cause like if the ending was on the record, kids would be crying. They'd be like, "What happened to the crew? They all died." <laughs> but you had to have that uplifting ending towards this. Um, going to back what the kids back then were right. Really, I mean, they really geared this for kids, but they made an adult film, and I think that's the problem with this film is like it didn't know who it was aiming at i mean uh yeah. you know i can say like we watched the sonic hedgehog movie i could take that a kid and a kid would just enjoy that i mean it would be like mm -hmm. i mean oh it's sonic and everything and jim carrey and big mustache and blah 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 and funny kids and you know the it's fun this one's like if you're gearing to children, because you were, you had figures, you had albums, you had comic books, why doesn't have it like a more kid feeling? It has this really depressing, dark storyline with older actors, because it's not like a kid's going like, Oh, I want to see Ernest Borgnine. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's like a, your kid, you don't even know what an Ernest Borgnine is. I mean, Charlie is there, obviously, to have a young person there he's the only really young person in this entire film and kate is not really a hottie it's not like she was set up there as some sort of sex symbol or something like uh, logan's run had uh, fair fawcett or whatever which i give him yeah great you know you got a good storyline there but i don't know it's just uh Okay, so the special effects. I'm going to go over special effects real quick uh, since we got a little bit of time. Green screen, like I said, you guys, what's your feeling? I mean, liked it, love it for the time. I mean, I thought it would be more annoying. One of the techniques that I noticed was when they were flying under the ship, the with their ship, um... I noticed that what uh, I was seeing was like a roof, essentially, right. with the walls being the green screen and it, making it appear to be space. Yeah, because I, I noticed like some pipes that were obviously like ceiling pipes, right? Uh, and like more of a, I guess, industrial or like a warehouse uh, area. So I thought it was creative. Um, it could have obviously been done a little bit better, yeah. green screening wise, but yeah, I didn't um, find it annoying. I was surprised. I really was. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, with all the great green screen effects we get nowadays, that I would like get out of it, but it didn't take me out of the story. And some of that I found yeah. very artistic. Uh, the black hole itself, the movement, and all that. What yeah. What do you think of that? 
Um, it, I guess with the knowledge that we have now, I kind of know what they would really look like. Yeah. And so I just, yeah, obviously like, it's not going to move that fast cause they're so huge. Uh, yeah. And the, the scale definitely felt off. Yeah. I was going to say the size consistency every time they would show it was different. Yeah. And that, that could, that could take you out of film. Uh, I almost felt yeah. like, like you were talking about like a ride. Like if you go on a ride, you'll see like something like that on a ride. Right. Yeah. yeah it's one of the things I'm supposed to shoot at. Yeah, exactly. Um, theoretically black holes are, um, not have been proven. That's the truth. If you want to get down to it, um, there has never really been a discovery of a black hole. Um, scientists say, oh, we found one. We know for sure that this is possibly a black hole, but they really have not gone deep in space enough to really prove that the existence. And as we know, black holes, uh, you know... Isn't the Milky Way a black hole? Huh? Yep. Isn't the Milky Way just a black hole? No, no, it's not. <laughs> the Milky Way is a galaxy. A black hole is basically uh, that everything... Some people believe it's, it could be an exploding star, exploding nova. Uh, you know, well, nova is exploding. But anyways, it's basically if there was an explosion in space, because there's no oxygen in space, right? And a vacuum would happen, and therefore, theoretically, uh, putting in uh, galaxies and stars and uh, time would be swallowed into this, uh, you know, big uh, dimension. Uh, where pe things end up, if you go into a black hole, nobody knows. And so it's a theory in speculation, but a lot of people with mathematicians, oh, no, it's a fact. It's not a fact, y'all. I mean, then there, you've got to deal with dwarfs, and you've got to deal with white, uh, white holes as well. Basically, black holes are not the only holes out there. There's also white holes, too. But, and in California, they have Asian holes. The bottom line is... You know, it, it's a theory, and it's a good theory, and it's fun, and it's imagination, just stirs imagination. So, real quick, scientifically wise, with the fire, it, I got two issues. Okay, we go into the uh, plant life, get into the scientific part. Okay, the plant life goes, and we have this crashing meteor storm. Okay, so obviously we're sucking out and cause space is cold. We have this, uh, you know, the guys are freezing, and they're trying to grab. Uh, I guess, oh, Bob. Because they weren't wearing helmets or anything. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So then you go into the fiery asteroid. So I'm like, which is going down. So the question is, you know, did that take you out? Or was that, I mean, when I was a kid, oh, that's spectacular. But does that take you out? Because it's like, how do you go from being sucked out to this able enough to gravity to hold this mediator to go down their fiery asteroid which was a great by the way did you not think that was a great special effect was not a great special effect i thought it was terrible <laughs> <laughs> i'll be honest i thought they were horrid i was like what is that yeah the fiery meteoroids right when i was a kid that was just like wow you know and everybody would and i believe that was one of their money shots like this is the there's no yeah there's nothing in the my problem with it was they were red because they were red hot yeah and like molten but like a space is cold b like there's nothing in space to cause friction there's no air for molten lava yeah. like for well that. here's here's another thing too is you you were talking about the gravity thing like you know the cygnus has created this anti-gravity which whatever science mm. there is that was another thing too but once you crash into it it's like is the anti-gravity breaking down i don't know it's just it's a lot of questions there and that neil degrasse tyson can answer for us uh but here's the thing is i always thought the fire meteoroids were really cool looking i always did as a kid and i can see them existing because basically a star is a 
you know, something that is basically on fire forever, you know, basically. And almost forever, we don't know. You know, because stars do fade out and then they die. Uh, then we've got exploding stars, which causes, you know, a lot of questionable things we don't know for sure, you know. But basically, these, these things are in question. That's what I'm saying. Nowadays, I don't even think Hollywood would attempt something like this because you've got people so much like, I don't think that would happen, you know, on the internet, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, which shows you the difference. Uh, I don't know. It's like the, the problem I have, if they didn't establish the plant, it means one of those scenes has to go. You have to take the plant thing out or you have to take the fiery asteroid out. I would say take the fiery asteroid out, even though it's a great visual effect, because I can justify, because you can't just say, oh, it's cold out there, and then you're in the next site, and it's a fiery asteroid. How do you do right. both? You can't have one or the other. That's the issue that you run into. Mm -hmm. Either you're going to have a fiery asteroid, or they're going to get sucked out in space. So which one is yeah. it? Which one is it? So that's that's the thing I wanted to touch on a little bit. But again... When you were six years old, you don't give a crap. It's like, oh, that's a cool effect. Yeah, not really. You're like, you know. Yeah, I can see it being put in there for the kids, just, you know, special effects to be like, oh, pretty lights, you know. Yeah. But I mean, honestly, the the gunfire ones were more impressive, I think. Than... You thought the gunfire? That's mm -hmm. That kind of got me out of it, too, because some of those effects, like, they didn't even react. Like, they're just sitting there. The, the, the robots are just standing up, and then the guys are standing, too, and it's like, there's lasers coming at you. <laughs> There's a couple yeah. parts where I saw Charlie. Yeah, really like they were trained by the same guy who trained the stormtroopers. Yeah. yeah it's like, he's like, how come I keep on shooting and I can't hit them? Because we're stormtroopers. I should have thought of that. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. And the end, they fly through hell and they come out and, the, and then that's it. And, and then the credits are up on on the thing and they're lost forever and then hopefully for a sequel which they didn't get because this film flopped at the in the theaters so um if you here's here's a question here's a question you knew star wars existed yeah you knew it was a big deal you started buying the figures this ad comes out in the paper and the next Star Wars film doesn't come out till next year. Do you, as a kid, say, Mommy, Daddy, take me to this to feed my Star Wars hunger? No. You wouldn't? I, I guess. I don't know. As a kid, no. You don't think so? You don't think he would go, Mommy, Daddy, take me to this. I, I, I got to have some space stuff because my figures... Call it a ripoff. Huh? Yeah. I'd call it a ripoff and tell my parents, I, if you see that, no. Yeah. As a child? Yes. Interesting. I was very picky as a child. Yeah. You, meaning, in other words, a yeah. yeah, Alex but. would be thumbing through his parents' uh, tickets and he'd see Black O and say, What is this? You know, the only space would... adventure is Star Wars. Did you just go to the Black Hole? Uh, uh, no, it was the neighbor kids. Uh, they left their tickets here. Uh, they came over here. Don't you lie to me! You went and saw this. That's exactly how it would go. Exactly. Have you have you guys go. seen Alien yet? I've seen bits and pieces of it. Yeah, me too. I played the Alien Isolation game. And 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 let's be honest, folks. I mean, it was basically a uh, Star Wars ripoff. <laughs> But it's a good, it's definitely more like yeah, a horror movie. Yeah, but it's, so. yeah, and that's how they got away with it. And it's like, mm -hmm. if you be honest, that's a good, you know, Star Wars ripoff. I mean, here's here's basically Dan O'Bannon who talked like this. He created Hippies in Space, which was the first film that I did with John Carpenter by the name of, it was the first alien film when I did it, when John and I went to college together. So we created this film called um, 
I can't even think of his name, Dark Star, which was a spoof of 2001 Space Odyssey. So that was hippies in space, and so they came to me and said, now we need a Star Wars ripoff. And I said, well, why don't we go back to the old st uh, space films, and I create a monster, and we'll call it, instead of hippies in space, we'll call it truck drivers in space. And so thus came Alien. And after that, it was a really successful hit. And so there you go. So Dan O'Bannon with his creativity created Alien. And that's really an example of how to rip off a film. If you want to do a good Star Wars, do a good story, good special effects. And they did really great. And really, Scott did a really good job on that. But anyways, in comparison to those two films, this movie did not do par. It's just like I said, it's just confusing who you have to make. I think you with writing, you have to write for you. I think for you to be satisfied, uh, don't, I mean, that's just my personal opinion. People sit there and say, well, you got to think about the kiddies. You got to think about the adults. You got to think about the, this community and that community. But problem is you get crap because your passion is not there. Right. What is good for you? And if other people like it, that's fine. If they don't get it, then that's fine too. I think that's my personal mm -hmm. At least you're happy with what you got. That's just what I feel about yeah. it. And that's my problem with this is this was too much corporation here going, we're Disney and we just got kicked in the balls. What do we do, you know, to try to get us back into the movie game? And they really didn't get into the movie game until they started making touch tone films and that's what that's the reason why they're back where they're at is uh, down and out in beverly hills is what saved disney and it was an, their <laughs> first adult film they had to get away from doing the fox and the hound and all those films because after that then they could go back to doing hercules and lion king and all that stuff but they needed the money to do those good films and this one yeah. This one in Tron did not save them whatsoever. It just hurt them even more. And to know and to think that that's a good comeback story is Disney. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. like if they didn't have Disneyland or Disney World, Disney would have been. If they relied on their movies up till I say eighty five, Disney would be bankrupt today. And if it wasn't for Disney World and Disneyland, and you know they, those guys just would have had it hanged up. They would have had to hang up because if they had film, this is the films that Disney was producing. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. This is what they were doing, and they were not successful at it. And it took them rethinking their whole life and rethinking it. And now, where they're at, they own Star Wars, they own the Muppets. Uh, oops. They just bought Neil deGrasse Tyson. He says the black hole was the greatest scientific adventure of all time. So there you go, folks. That's what it takes to get back out there. So there's inside of you, when you think you're down, remember that if you own an amusement park, you will survive. Any thoughts, comments? Who would you recommend this film for? To, uh, to people who... I guess, like you said earlier, to the people who were like, man, I'm waiting for the next Star Wars to come out. Yeah. Give me something. Yeah, a year for a child is an eternity. <laughs> yeah. We waited three years for Star Wars films. And uh, th these people were smart enough to realize, oh, wait a minute. We can sneak a film in, to the <laughs> in between the next Star Wars films. Mm -hmm. That's smart. Give them that. Because... 81 to 83, what did they do? They started chunking out Star Wars ripoffs left and right. It was like, yeah. Space Hunter! Honestly, if I had to sit and wait three to four years for a Marvel movie, I'd be like, give me another superhero movie. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. even if it was done by Ghetto Productions, you know, it didn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> give, me, give me a hand clap. I liked Hancock. That's a good superhero movie that's not like Marvel or DC. Yeah. I was thinking about Hancock today. I always love that. That's what I was thinking about. Good job. Good job. <laughs> That's my favorite line. Because <laughs> he had to realize. Okay. I think we're done here. And now we'll talk about our shoot coming up, guys. We've got a big old shoot coming up. And uh, we'll see what we need to discuss. Because if they got any confusion and peace, we're out of here. Thanks for joining us for another review. Watch our Sonic Hedgehog movie. 
review coming out with Lucas and I where we talked about Sonic the Hedgehog. So there, I guess I go. Who's your daddy? 